Hello, studio audience. Coming to the podcast interview, you've seen him on Peacock's number one hit television show, Queen's Court. We have the wonderful, amazing, talented Thailand. Say, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? I am your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, the best film writer and director in St. Louis Facts, award-winning published author, actor, journalist, actor, business owner, nominated music artist, Lacey G. Soldier Turner. And today I got a very special guest with me, man. Y'all already know, man, fitness instructor, man. He doing this thing, TikTok videos, flexing his muscles for all the ladies they be drooling all over, man. It was on a hit Peacock series, Queen's Court. Man, we got the wonderful, amazing, talented Ty, man. You know, he doing stuff better than me. You already know. Look, I was trying to flex my muscles with him, but you know, he's stronger than me, so I said, forget it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Welcome to the platform. Ty, how you doing? I'm great, man. It's a blessing to be here. Well, that's good. So, my first question to you, where were you born and raised, and how was your upbringing? I was born in Point Blank. Had an awesome up upbringing, man. Awesome. It's all about family. Mm. So is that Point Blank, Texas? Yeah, Point Blank, oh, okay. Texas. Ah, okay. Ah. So for people who never been to Texas, especially Point Blank, I heard of Dallas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I heard of Houston. Yeah. So for people who never been to Point Blank, can you describe how the city is? I'm going to tell you first thing, you're going to smell them pine trees, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know you're in East Texas, uh, Point Blank, man. It's, it's a community of, of loving people. It's a lot of retired military people go there because we got the lake. They like to fish. Mm, okay, so look, man, I'm about to jump straight over to this. All right, so you was on a hit show that's, that's popping <laughs> right now on Peacock. They had Holly, Ro Holly Robinson P. Rodney Pete, you already know, they hosted the show. <laughs> you got Nivea. You got Evelyn. You got to take more Braxton, man, the Queen's Court, man. Uh, so how was it like, how did you hear about the show to get on it? And what was that experience like when you did that first episode? Man, I think uh, they saw me on my TikToks. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the energy, my personality, uh, they hit me up. Uh, I did my series of interviews and I got selected. And man, on the show, it was, it was awesome, man. Amazing show. Mm -hmm. Uh, meeting different people, different cast members, and had a great time. Mm -mm. Right. So, okay. So, look, I want to jump into this. <clears throat> they might call this controversy. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when Nivea assumed that you were out for only sex? <laughs> I get straight to it. Now. <laughs> hey, I always say, man, never judge a book by its cover, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people, first thing they look at me, a sex magnet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's because they, of the muscles, and like, oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, some sex, it's so. the smile, the the muscles. Uh, but with me, it was just trying to get to know her, mm -hmm. and it was just hard for her to open up to me because she couldn't look at me. Mm -hmm. So you wasn't, but so truthfully though, in your mind, you weren't looking at her like, oh yeah, I need some of this. So you really wanted to get the door for it. Yeah, on, on the truth, man, I wouldn't... No, I, I came to that show to look for love. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't come to that show for sex. Mm -hmm. I came to look for love. and uh, So that's what I was trying to look for with her. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you made it far through the show. How did you feel when, you know, you got eliminated for all that time? Well, uh, I didn't ever get eliminated to the, to the end. I mm -hmm. made it all the way to the final. Mm -hmm. Uh and when she didn't select me, she didn't pick me, uh, I was upset uh, because I did everything to my best ability to do, to try to win somebody over. Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't work. And I just look at it like when it all bound down, I wasn't her king mm -hmm. and she wasn't my queen. Okay. 
All right. We're going we gonna to talk about that some more. Let me take a little bit of the pressure off you right now. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Many people, uh, you know, we always ask about their hobbies. So I want to ask you, what do you like, dislike doing the most? So on that show, on the show, mm-hmm. what I uh, dislike was in reality, man, I would never, ever walk up to another lady while a guy talking to her. Mm. And we had to do that. That's that's a brother code thing. Uh, you just don't do that. Mm. And I would never do that, but on that show, we had to do it. Mm. Okay. So, how many kids do you have? Man, <laughs> first of all, awesome dad. Yeah. Great dad. Uh, <laughs> great dad, awesome dad. Man, I got six kids. Mm. Uh, I love all my kids. Um, uh, and I'm glad you asked that question, man, because you know, a lot of people tend to want to judge a person mm-hmm. because of how many kids they got. Mm-hmm. But they never sit and ask, hey, you know what? Or talk about, that guy's a great dad. Mm-hmm. That guy drive eight hours to see his daughter baseball game. That guy was there just to go to his daddy and daughter dance. Mm-hmm. Six hours. Uh, a loving grandpa, too. So, yeah. Awesome dad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you just say grandpa? You don't even, you, you, you <laughs> like you about 30 years old. I this what did you say. You're a grandpa too? Oh, yeah. Proud grandpa. Man, I want to, uh, you know, commend you because, like you said, uh, a lot of people, you know, look at people having a lot of kids as a negative, And it's good to see that, you know, we have our African-American men while we're taking care of their kids, loving their kids. And I think it's a special thing, especially, you know, to grow. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. So salute to you for that. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I seen your TikTok video, you know what I'm saying? You flexing your muscles. I seen the women going crazy, drooling and everything. So... How do you manage your attraction for groupies, as they call them? So, on my TikTok platform, it, it is not to try to pull women's. So, every time I'm doing my TikToks, I'm auditioning. Uh, I'm showing different sides of me. Mm-hmm. I'm showing the sex side. I'm showing the smart side. I'm showing the fitness side. And I'm showing the talent side. So, all together, my platforms is to try to inspire others you know, the people that hiding behind the corner. How, how do you get the confidence to do that? Mm-hmm. If I can do it, you can do it. Mm-hmm. You just got to reach deep down to find it, to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I do what I do. Okay. Okay, I like that. So let me, let me give you a scenario. So doing your TikTok, what if a chick hop in your inbox, a model, be like, look, fly me out. Give me the bag so I can sex you up. What you going to do? <laughs> First of all, I'm going to say no, because mm-hmm. I done had that happen. mm mm-hmm. See, I done had to have, see, you can't buy me. Mm. <laughs> can't buy me because I know how hard I work. Mm. And one day, I will get there. Mm. Nice. I like the answer up in this world. Groupie, <laughs> stay out the inbox. You heard what he just said up in this world. So, you know, being that you, you know, you're doing this acting thing now. So, who is your favorite actor and actress? Oh, that's hands down. Denzel, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. Why, why, why? Man, because, see, not only do Denzel... Act, but he relate. He he can relate to young brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, how hard it was for him to get where he came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you say you get it out the mud? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, the trials and tribulation he had to do uh, to get there, and the mm-hmm. things that he overcame to get there. And it's just it's just when he talk, man. It's if you if you stand on the other side, it's like you can feel it. Mm-hmm. You can feel the energy. You know what I'm saying when, when he talks. So. Man, every time I watch him on shows, it inspires me because one day I'm going to be like, man, I want to be like Denzel. You right. know what I'm saying? Okay. I want to not only do I want to reach people in the movie, but I want to reach, reach people in the communities too. Okay. In the youth. So, yeah. All right. I got Denzel on speed dial. What's up, Denzel? Now. What's up, bro? <laughs> what about your favorite female actress? Favorite female? Man, what is Jada Pickett? Mm. Uh, Even with the <laughs> entanglements? No. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was Jada, man. I just... Uh, it was just something about Jada, man, the way she carried herself. Uh, strong, strong black woman, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the roles, because she had, in some movies, set it off. Mm-hmm. You know, she had some big role, big lines, and the way she nailed them and with confidence. And, and when I saw that, man, you know, immediately I'm like, man, mm-hmm. Jada got it going on, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So. Mm-hmm. I think everybody loved Jada. <laughs> 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 All right, let me put this pressure back on you a little bit now. <laughs> now, uh, on the show, Queen's Court, so 
You know, you was doing your thing. You know, I've been watching it, like I said. You know, you got Nivea pouring water all over herself. So, which king do you feel was your toughest competition and why? Well, I, I, I only competed with one person. That was, that was Mac. Mm. The satin teddy bear. Because <laughs> Mac, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy, Mac. Um, so, the deal with this show with me and Mac, man... Uh, you no, know, we wanted to go in saying, you know, let's let's be different, man. Let's do mm-hmm. something different on a reality show. You know, we don't have to fight and mm-hmm. and argue and want to throw hands to compete with a woman, man. We could do this in a gentleman, respectful way. Mm-hmm. You know, a brother way, man. And and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. But at the end, we had to tighten <laughs> up. <you know? laughs> Indeed. Okay, so now that the show is over, um, are there any scenes that was cut out that you wish was featured in the show? And if so, why? Well, to be honest, was no to me, uh, what they showed, it was me. I never changed up. Uh, I went in that thing. I'm proud of who I am. Uh, I competed. Mm-mm. I mean, I gave it my all Mm-mm. and just didn't get picked. So, and they didn't cut out anything. Was it some massaging going on? Oh, yeah, we did massage. Uh, uh, uh. That's, that's another one of my talents. Oh, okay, okay. You hear that, ladies? Do not jump in the inbox, though, trying to, you know, for sex. <laughs> but he will give you the massage. Though. Okay. <laughs> so, listen, man, you know, I, I've been knowing this one person for years, you know what I'm saying? I, I met this person. We met at Webster University. I think we had acting class together. And I heard the same answers from, you know what I'm saying? I heard she business, mind the business, bitch. She all about business. So look, name me three words that describes your manager. Consistent. Number one. Oh yeah, consistent. Uh, she inspired me. Um, uh, she believed in her talent. Uh, and she's an awesome person. I can I can go more than three, man. I can go more than three. Mm. Beautiful, strong black woman, for example, for uh, the young ladies out there looking for a, a great role model, Miss Tan Hollywood. Yeah, mm. Tan. Look, when you get rich, I need some of that money. So make sure you holler at me after this. Week. Yeah, just break me off a little bit. I just, <laughs> I just need ten percent of the million. I can do something with that. <laughs> but look though, so man, uh, that you acting. If you ever had the right. Or plot or something for a movie. What would it be? Action. Mm. Action. You like action? I like action, man. Okay, let me ask you this right now. So, if Tyler Perry called you right now and was like, "Hey, drop everything. I need you. What are you doing?" Oh, I'm I'm catching flights, bro. Are you I'm leaving catch- everything? The I'm kids, leaving, the grandbaby. Hey, hey, I'm catching flights because mm. I know how hard I work, mm. and to just get that call from Tyler Perry, man. I'm I'm going, mm. uh, because Tyler Perry, man, is one of a kind. Okay. So I heard you can do a great Mr. Brown impersonation. Can I can I get a little bit of that? Can I get a little bit of that? Up there? <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> Cora, Cora, look at him over there, Cora. He little bald head self, Cora. I don't know what he doing, Cora. He always talking about my ash and knees, Cora. But look at him, Cora. With his shiny white teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, Tyler, you see that? If you ever need a voiceover when Mr. Brown is sick, you got your man right <laughs> for this work. So, um, so Ty, do you have any um, charities or outreach initiatives? So yeah, um, so I do this this Hollywood. I mean, Halloween uh, thing for the youth, for the kids in my community. My my parents started it, mm-hmm. um, and they gave it to the to the kids, and we just continued it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm doing that, and it's it's amazing for the kids. We do it once a year uh, to try to bring the communities to get together because once we feel like the communities is trying to veer off, we do something to try to bring it back together. And that, Hall- and that Halloween party is like mm-hmm. a prime example of it. Nice, okay, doing your thing. Look at they doing all type of things. So. Even though you got eliminated off the show, you made it to the end, though. We got to keep make sure we say that. Even though you didn't, you know, win, I know you still out here looking for your queen up in this mug. So can you tell me 
the qualities that you look for in a woman? Well, number one, uh, I just want her to be herself. I don't want to be nobody different. Because once you try to act like somebody that you're not, you got to live up to that. And basically, that's a lie. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to keep living up to a lie. So you come to me, just come as you. Because I'm not looking at the outer part, I'm looking at the inner part. Mm-hmm. The heart is more stronger than the outer part to me. Mm-hmm. And then when all the looks fade, what do we have? Mm-hmm. Can we have? Can we talk? Mm-hmm. So that's why I base it on. Mm-hmm. Just nice. be yourself. Like that. There you go. See, ladies, go ahead and line up. You see what he's looking for. So you already know. But do not hop in the inbox saying fly me out. <laughs> that is a no-no. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you this. Describe the three queens in one word. I'm going to start with uh, Evelyn. <clears throat> Smart. Mm. Okay. What about Tamar? <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind getting you off. <laughs> yeah. Nivea. <laughs> Entertaining. Mm, okay, okay. So, okay, so you've been doing this for a while now. Um, so what has been your greatest challenge in this industry so far? Man, just overcoming the nose. Mm-hmm. Because in this business, if anybody trying to pursue this business, you're going to hear more no's than yes. Mm-hmm. And it's how you handle it. Facts. That is true. Hey, everybody, uh, a lot of people, I've interviewed a lot of celebrities, and they say the same thing. It was like, you're going to get no's. Don't let it distract you. As long as you know your talent, stay focused, and you can yes, achieve sir. everything you put your mind to. So, Okay, so what has been your greatest accomplishment? Man, Peacock. <laughs> mm. Peacock, this show... Um, and other things that I done done, but to set that one different, it'd be the Peacock Show, man. Okay. So what advice would you give to any entertainer or somebody trying to get into the business? The best advice I would give you is <clears throat> look in the mirror mm. and you look at yourself and say, I could be whatever I want to be. I could do whatever. I choose to put my mind and soul and heart to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it don't matter where I'm from, don't matter how I look, don't matter how tall I am, how I talk. Each and every one of us have a talent. And once we find our talent, I can do it. But along among that, we need to always keep God first. Mm-hmm. And when we keep God first, that mountain, you can climb it with no problem. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. Um, who are your, I guess I would say, I'm going to get you two. Who are your top two favorite film directors? You want them now? There you go. There you go. Cool out. You try to get 10% of my money. No, I'm just All right. <laughs> you want them, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, what's his you name? Know, we got John Singleton. We got Spike nah, Lee. Spike Lee. That's it. Spike Lee. You know Spike Lee. You know Spike Lee. Hey, Lee. Hey, <laughs> you know Spike Lee. Ready? Yo, come on, man. Yes. I love Spike, Spike Lee, Lee for a social right. conscious film. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, do you have anything coming up that you want to promote or got going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, St. Louis, first of all, what's up? Mm-hmm. Like, what's up, man? I am an enjoying this town, man. I'm telling mm-hmm. y'all. Uh, the people up here are just so cool and nice, man. Uh, so, I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for the next fitness model, man. Mm-hmm. Somebody that can stand beside me mm. and bring it just like I can bring it, mm. right? Okay. So if you if you out there, fit this models, mm. y'all check it out. I got it posted on my TikTok, my Facebook, my Instagram. Make sure y'all call Miss Tan Hollywood. Mm-hmm. She'll get everything set up. Yep. And if it's you, show me what you got. Pull up on me. Okay, okay. My next question, leading up to that. So where can people find you? How can they get in contact with Ty? So if you out there and you want to get in contact with Big T, uh, like a loaded fitness, Thailand, you can catch me on Facebook, Tyrone Norman. Catch me on Instagram, Big T. I mean, Big T Locked. S. Loaded. YouTube, Big T Locked. S. Loaded. TikTok. Oh, yeah, TikTok. <laughs> Big T Locked. S. Dot loaded. Now keep in mind, I want y'all to know that it's a lot of fake imposters mm-hmm. out there. 
If you're going to look at my website, make sure you look at the number. Look at the name fully all the way through before you accept any mm -hmm. kind of messages. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And if you jump in this inbox trying to tell them to fly you out, <laughs> tan Hollywood is going to get on your head. She need them focused. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we had a great interview. So my last question that I love to ask all my guests, when it is all said and done and, and you are long gone from this earth, what is it that you want the people to know about time? First of all, I, I want my kids, my grandkids to know that, man, my grandpa made a way for us. My dad made a way for us. So look at us now. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked every day and he never said uh, he never stopped doing what he believed in doing because he had a vision when he was a child. When his mom asked him, six years old, what you want to be? He told her he was going to be famous, and he never stopped. Mm -hmm. And and for the youth, I want them to know, hey, Tyrone Norman was a hardworking guy uh, <laughs> and what he believed in and what he stood for mm -hmm. and the things that he'd done mm -hmm. to make it where he made it at. It's awesome. Uh, well, thank you, brother. I appreciate you being on the show. Um, I'm going to get you on my podcast, too. But uh, I see a lot of great things in you. You are uh, humble down to earth. And, you know, I like that. A lot of people get a taste of fame and they just be arguing like, hey, give me the blue M&M's that's in my locker room. You know what I'm saying? And all that type of stuff. So I uh, appreciate the things you're doing for the community and everything. And I know you're going to find your queen. So salute, brother. <laughs> appreciate you. All right. And I got one more thing to go say. Ahead, go ahead, break, break it one down. more thing to say. I just want y'all to know, without God, one none of this would be happening for mm -hmm. me right now. Uh, I pride, I pride myself with, with being a, a faithful guy, uh, and always keeping God first, walking straight, a straight line. And I'm gonna tell y'all, things gonna get in your way, because once you start being good, that's when it get harder for you. Mm -hmm. But if you keep your mind on Jesus, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. I just want y'all to know that. Okay. And that's real talk. You know what I'm saying? God, he, uh, once you start, you know, becoming successful, God removes the people who is not supposed to be in your life out Amen. too. You know, some people in your life for reasons and some are in for seasons. So uh, it's good. It's great that you put God in everything. So everything appreciate you. Salute, brother.